Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating character animation in Adobe Flash CS 5.5. So we're going to be looking at how to use the bone tool in Flash to actually animate characters and other types of objects in Flash. So the first thing we're looking at here is we've got this Flash file open um, and you can follow along with the exercise file and we're going to be animating the silhouette character. So if we double click on the character in Flash, we can see that each element is actually a separate movie clip. And we can select each one separately if we want to. So what we're going to do now is select the bone tool from the toolbar on the left. And we're going to click and drag a bone from the upper body of the character to her stomach. And then we're going to click and drag another bone from the stomach to the waist. From the waist to the upper leg. From the upper leg to the knee the knee to the foot and finally we're going to drag a bone from the foot down to the toe. Now, if we click back on our selection tool in, in the toolbar now we can click and drag around uh, anywhere any of the bones and we can see that we can actually animate and all of the bones are linked together and the character moves naturally as it would if those bones were connected together in reality. So we can start to see how the animation might look if we were to use keyframes to animate it. At the moment we're just moving it with the selection tool. So one problem that we can see here is that the first bone that we created there is rotating on a pivot point and what we want to do is actually lock that bone down. So I'm going to select the first bone in isolation and I'm going to go to the properties panel and I want to disable rotation on that bone. If we go back to our selection tool and just click and drag uh, from the toe, we can now see that the rotation doesn't work anymore for the upper body part, which is exactly what we want. Um, it's been disabled, so uh, just the rest of the body is going to move now. If we stretch out the leg um, all the way to the top and select the knee bone, what we want to do here is to constrain the rotation that's possible on the knee bone because at the moment we can actually bend the knee all the way around in an unnatural position which wouldn't happen in reality so we need to actually make sure that it stops at a certain point to make it look more realistic so if we select the knee bone and then in the properties panel tick the constraint box and we want to put the max down to 9 degrees and we can bring the minimum to minus 105 degrees so that we can actually rotate the knee bone around backwards uh, a bit more than it was by default. Okay, so now we can just check that out and we can see that the knee is moving much more realistically now. Uh, if we select the foot bone now and in the properties tick the constrain box and we're going to make sure the minimum is minus 10 degrees, the maximum 40 degrees. And let's just check that out. So now the foot bone, again, is not going to rotate beyond uh, what would look realistic. Okay, if we hold down the Alt key and drag any of the movie clips, we can actually move them independently of the rest of the bone structure by holding down the Alt key. Um, we can also apply the free transform tool at this point on any of the individual movie clips in a bone structure. So what we're going to do is get the character to do a handstand and we're going to make her be the L in the word style in this uh, flash banner ad. So if we <clears throat> just resize, use the free transform tool to resize her, put her into a handstand position and resize her into place so that she becomes the L in the word style there. So what we're going to do next is actually animate some of the character poses. So if we double click on the character again to go inside the movie clip and just notice the bone structure that we created and move them around. So what we're actually going to do now is instead of just moving it, we're going to animate the movements, animate the poses. So in the timeline we can see there's three layers at the moment. When we created the bone structure, Flash automatically creates a layer called Armature. Um, we can actually delete the other two layers, we don't need them anymore, we can just keep the Armature layer that Flash created for us. And we're going to create a series of poses to animate this character. So if we go on to frame 15 and right click and choose insert pose from the drop down menu there, um, it's going to create a keyframe for us there in frame 15. 
where we can change the pose of our character. So just bring the knees down a little bit towards the middle and bring the legs up a little, just change the pose. Press enter to have a look at the animation so far. Then if we go to frame 30 and if we right click and choose insert pose again, we're going to change the pose one more time and uh, alter, put her, uh, maybe bring her knees over to the left side and stretch her legs out a little bit. Press enter to check the animation. This time we can see it's a fluid animation. Flash works out all of the tweening for us and creates a seamless, natural looking animation. So what we want is for the character to end up back in the exact same position that she starts in. So in order to do that, we need to click on frame 45 first of all, then right click and choose insert frame. This is gonna be the end of our animation. And then if we command click on frame one to just select frame one in isolation from the rest of the motion tween. And then if we right click and choose copy pose from the drop down menu, then go to the last frame, frame 45, and right click on it and choose paste pose. So what's happening here is the exact pose from frame one has now been co copied to the end of the animation, uh, which is exactly what we want. It's gonna loop uh, back to the start again. So the, the final thing, for this part is we're going to go to frame 60 and we're going to right click and insert another frame there and what this does is it creates 15 frames where the last pose remains in place without movement so it effectively creates a pause at the end of the clip so if we control and enter to test our movie and we can watch the animation playing uh, for us and we can see this fluid seamless animation exactly what we wanted so you can also use the bone tool uh, along with Flash's animation techniques to animate things that you wouldn't normally associate with having bones, for example. So it doesn't have to be people or animals or, or characters. Um, what we're gonna do in this part is we're gonna animate the flower on the bottom right hand of the screen there. So if we double click on the flower symbol, we just have a look at what we've got inside. It's just a simple vector shape with no complex elements. Uh, so what we're going to do is select the bone tool and draw a bone from the bottom leaf up towards the first branch junction in our plant. And then we're going to click and drag bones out to the various stems and branches uh, within the flower in all three directions. So we've got three stems here. We're going to drag out bones all the way up through the branches and the leaves, just connecting them all together as we do that. Okay, so we've got a pretty nice bone structure now. If we choose the selection tool and drag the bones from any uh, angle, and we can, we can see how they all uh, move according to the bone structure that we created. So even though a plant may not have bones, uh, obviously, by how we would define them. By using the Flash's bone tool, we can create this natural fluid movement and potentially animation as well. So what we're gonna do is change the positioning of the flower for its starting position so that it looks like it's sort of lying down on the right hand side, just drag the flower down towards the bottom right. And once we have the starting pose, we're gonna go to frame 30 and we'll right click and choose insert pose. So changing uh, the pose of the flower um, is what we're gonna do in frame 30. We're gonna maybe bring the flower up towards the middle, change some of the branch positions and so on. And okay, we're happy enough with that. We'll insert a frame at frame 45 and then hold down the control key and copy the pose in frame 30. We're going to paste this into frame 45. So let's click on frame 45, right click and choose paste pose. And this is going to keep the flower in the same position for us for that pause uh, period of time at the end of the animation. Now we're going to copy the pose in frame one. So what's going to happen here is the animation will play, it will pause and then it will play back and the flower will end up in the position it started with again. So as I said, copy the pose in frame one, insert a frame in frame 70, 
and then right click on that frame and choose paste pose to paste the pose from frame one into that new frame. Finally, we're going to just adjust some of the bones in frame 30 and frame 45. So just adjusting some of the individual uh, leaves and things so that they um, sort of slide into position a little bit more naturally. And we can actually treat this motion tween the same way we treat any motion tween in Flash. So if we click and drag from the end and make the clip shorter, it's actually going to speed up the animation, make it play faster. And uh, inversely, we can stretch it, stretch it out longer um, to say we'll stretch it out to frame 100. And that's going to make the animation take longer to play. So if we test the movie by pressing Control and Enter, Command and Enter on a Mac, we can just see how this flower is animating into position very fluidly, very naturally, uh, as a result of using the bone tool on it. And finally, we're going to add some more real-world motion to some of the elements of this animation. Um, so if we double-click on the earring on the left side of the screen there, we can see that it is composed of different movie clips as well. And if we select the bone tool and click and drag, we're going to link these four or five movie clips together here. So click and drag um, each one, just connecting each movie clip together, just like that. Okay, now we're going to go to frame 15 and we're going to right click and choose insert pose and go back to frame 1 and we're going to drag the earring out off to the left of the screen so that uh, it's going to start off screen and it's going to swing in to the right and end up in the pose that we've just put in frame 15. So press enter just to see the earring swinging in. Okay, looks good. We're going to insert a frame in frame 80 now to extend out the clip. And we're going to select all of the bones by holding down the shift key and clicking on each one one by one. And now that we've got all the bones selected, in the properties panel we can see that there's an option at the bottom called spring under the heading spring. And there's two sort of properties there, strength and dampening that apply to the amount of springiness in a particular animation or motion tween. So what we're going to do is put the strength to 50 and the dampening to 20. And then we're going to put a frame in frame 150, just so we can see the swing happening over a longer period of time. Um, and just test the movie now and we can see, yeah, the earring is swinging into position and just sort of dangling there until the end of the frame animation. So now we're going to just click back into the symbol and go through each movie clip one by one. And we're going to adjust the strength and the dampening of each one. So for the first one, we're going to choose strength 100%, dampening 10. And we'll work through each of these. The second one will be 80 for the strength and 20 for the dampening, then 60 for the strength and 40 for the dampening and all the way down to the last one, we should have strength at 10 or 20 and dampening at 90. So let's test this and we can see a dramatic change in the movement of the earring as a result of manipulating each of these movie clips individually. So uh, let's select the earring and finally add a drop shadow filter to it. Okay, so let's select the earring movie clip, go to your properties panel, add a filter effect of a drop shadow and we can adjust some of the qualities there, like change the angle to 150 degrees. We're going to increase the quality. We're going to put the distance at 25 pixels and the blur at about 10 pixels, strength 25%. So let's test the movie now and just see how the whole thing is working together. And we can see the flash automatically also an animates this shadow for us based on the motion tween path and the bone structure. So that's some very simple character animation using the bone tools in Adobe Flash CS 5.5.